All right, Badger fans, let's talk. This is going to be a bit of a salty locked on Badgers because I have some things I want to get off my chest, some frustrations. Um, I know y'all have frustrations. I have comments to get into that are salty. And I want to talk about Braylon Allen. I want to talk about Graham Mertz. What the heck is going on with them on the field, but also some of the off-field questions. We're going to get into all that on today's show. A bit of a salty, frustrated locked on Badgers, but I'm glad you're here for it. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, my friends? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. This is your team every single day. Really appreciate everybody tuning in. I know everybody's frustrated. We are one day past the the frustrating debacle in Kinnick Stadium against the Iowa Hawkeyes. You know, the Badgers for like a three-hour window. It felt like we were, you know, had control of our Big Ten West um, destiny. And within three hours, that Hindenburg fell to the, the fiery ground. Um, I do want to say thank you to our friends of the show. Today's show is brought to you. Lockdown Badgers today is brought to you by Sling TV. Don't miss this weekend's matchup uh, between all your favorite matchups right here on Sling, Sling TV. The TV you love for the price you love. Try it today. All right, let's get into it. So I want to start here. There's a bunch I want to talk about today. I really want to start with some of the off-field questions, like with Braylon Allen, Graham Mertz, questions of heart, questions of commitment. Are people invested? Is there tampering going on? How much should we care? Should we should we obliterate the players for this? Is it not a big deal? I'm telling you right now, I know it stinks, especially for traditionalists. I know it stinks probably for Wisconsin fans more than fans of other programs. Tampering's happening. I, it, it's a hundred percent happening. This is the new landscape of college football. Like the old paradigm's gone. That it's it's not here anymore. Like I, I told y'all on the show, I think it was on the show, but it was definitely the Discord. I was able to talk to a guy involved in setting up the NIL department for a big time school. Okay, a bigger profile college football school than Wisconsin. You should hear the stories. I'm just there is money out there being thrown at kids if they enter the transfer portal and leave. It's not when they enter. It's if they enter the transfer portal, we have already the money here for you. Okay. So for people getting frustrated, other schools might be tampering with Braylon Allen. I'm telling you right now, they are. I don't have any specifics, but I'm telling you they are. And Braylon Allen is probably not the only badger, right? Tampering is happening. And until something fundamentally changes, either with the NCAA or schools coalescing together to develop a better system, tampering is not going anywhere. It's probably going to get worse. As soon as the transfer, um, you know, the waiting out a year of transfer limitations were lifted and NIL was put in place, this is the result. It is what it is. Get used to it. Like, you can get frustrated by it, but get used to it. It's happening. And I don't blame the players. Okay? I'm going to be real honest, especially in this situation. We're talking specifically Graham Mertz and Braylon Allen. Um, but any of them. Like, I listen, it is incumbent on the University of Wisconsin and this football program to put – uh, a developmental program in place that your star players aren't enticed to transfer, right? Like this is, this is on Wisconsin. If, if you, if you lose Braylon Allen to somebody, and again, I'm, I'm speaking hypothetically here. It could be anybody insert a name, right? Braylon Allen only because the rumors are out there. He had to address it. Braylon Allen did address the rumors said, as long as Jim Leonard's here, I'm not going anywhere. I don't know where some of these rumors came from. I mean, if we're being completely fair, like Braylon Allen's following Mike Hart, Michigan's running back coach, like, yeah, that's where some of these rumors are coming from, Braylon. Like, let's have a little bit of honesty here. But I don't – all I'm saying is if he is reaching out, if he did reach out, if he never did, I'm not trying to debate one way or the other, but I wouldn't blame him. I wouldn't blame him because what has Wisconsin done for Braylon Allen? Now, again, people are just saying, I gave him a scholarship and all these cares. Sure, they hired – also hired a first-time coach who's never coached running backs, Al Johnson. I didn't like the hire when it was made. I said it. I This is not a good hire – to coach running backs at the University of Wisconsin, right? If you're Braylon Allen, your goal is to get to the NFL. What's happened this year? Your head coach got fired, right? Your offensive line hasn't been as good as it's been for a couple years now. To develop you, you know, Paul Chris brought in Al Johnson, who has never coached running backs and was an offensive lineman, right? Like, your offense has been substandard for several years. Yes, you're getting touches, you're getting carries, but this team is the last couple of years has devolved uh, into a mid-tier Big Ten West team with a mediocre offense line, bad play calling, and now you have a running backs coach who has never coached running backs. Yeah, if I'm Braylon Allen, I don't love that. Listen, I he grew up in Wisconsin. Like, he's a Wisconsin kid. He's balled out for this program. 
and he's not a victim here. I'm not trying to paint him as a victim, but let's, let's be real. You know, he's trying to get to the NFL. And if I'm trying to get to the NFL and I have Al Johnson coaching me on one side and what this Wisconsin offense has been the last several years, or I have what Michigan has done the last couple of years and Mike Hart, I'm just using Michigan as an example, insert powerhouse team because powerhouse team doesn't have an Al Johnson coaching running backs. Okay. And that's just an example, but players owe it to themselves to seek out their best opportunity. And the fact that sharks are circling a guy like Brandon Allen, that's Wisconsin's fault. That's Paul Christ's fault, right? That is, that is the cumulative effect of several years of mismanagement, poor recruiting, poor coaching hires at that. It's just, you know, I mean, Gary Brown wasn't, and obviously what happened to him was incredibly tragic, but you didn't replace him with a real running backs coach, you know, like these are real issues. And so I don't blame players at all. You know, let's talk about Graham Mertz for a second. And again, I'm not trying to out anybody. I don't know if these players have been reaching out or not, but I'm just saying like someone had mentioned, you know, there was an article earlier in the year that came out on, I think it's 247 that mentioned Graham Mertz as a potential guy who might transfer. We had a user come on the show, listener on the live show said yesterday that he thinks Graham Mertz has transferred and played with him in high school. I have no idea if that's validity or not, but I can already see fans saying, good, good riddance, get out of here. And I would be like, from Graham Mertz's standpoint, what has Wisconsin done to get him to stay? He's had a different uh, quarterbacks coach every year. The pass protection has been bad up until this year. His receivers haven't been that good, right? The play calling has been incredibly suspect. The head coach that recruited you was fired. The passing game has been um, incredibly underutilized, right? The offense has been complacent. Like, yeah, if you're Grant Mertz, you should look. Why wouldn't you look around? Again, uh, to me, people are pointing this as you know, Grant Mertz should get the heck out of here, and Braylon Allen isn't isn't committed. How dare he look around? And I'm not saying there isn't truth or validity to those viewpoints. I, I respect the people who get frustrated by that and feel that that is a lack of all in and all in commitment. But I don't think Wisconsin's held up their end of the bargain here, right? You you don't want your players poached. Don't put your program in a position where the head coach gets fired four games into the season, you know, where you're, you're bringing in coaches who have never coached those positions. Like look at the offenses here, you know, and, and then tell me that you think it's unreasonable that Mertz or Braylon Allen look around. There's a tight ends coach who's never coached tight ends. There's a running backs coach who's never coached running backs. There's a quarterbacks coach who's never coached quarterbacks. There's an offensive coordinator, also the quarterbacks coach, who was never an offensive coordinator. Like, I don't blame these kids for looking around in that situation. They have to maximize their opportunities to develop and get to the NFL. And if you don't want that to happen as a program, right, then you need to make the, the appropriate coaching decisions and hires to develop the players so they don't feel the need to leave. You have to make the appropriate decisions of the program so other programs aren't coming in and circling your players like sharks because there's blood in the water, because there's blood in the water, because this program has been stagnant on offense for too long. Like, like it's frustrating to me. Uh, you know, the other part of this is Wisconsin, there's a there's an element of Wisconsin fandom and an element of uh, Wisconsin where we really tend to look at ourselves as woe is us. Like we can't compete with this. We can't do that. Listen, Wisconsin's much more of a have than have not in the college football food chain. I've talked about that forever. Wisconsin is one of the highest revenue producing athletic departments in the country. They're the fourth best program from a, a football pedigree standpoint in the richest athletic conference in the world, right? Like Wisconsin can leverage this and go and get, player we're, we're always so worried about who's going to poach from us and we can't do this we can't do that wisconsin needs to step up a little bit and they can do some poaching themselves is my point right and i think we're moving in the direction of that i don't think paul christ was the guy for it the varsity collective is spinning up i think getting a new coach in right now is instrumental in, in getting wisconsin some some of that aggressive push because we we can go get players too Right. And that's what fans need to realize. We we're so worried about Braylon Allen leaving or someone else leaving or schools coming in and poaching us. Wisconsin should be the poacher. Wisconsin's a hunter. Right. There's there's a couple schools. If you're talking food chain, like there's a couple apex predator schools, Ohio State, USC, Michigan. But Wisconsin's right underneath that tier and way above a bunch of other schools. So when fans get frustrated with this, first of all, again, this is the landscape now. It's not changing. Teams are tampering. It's going to continue happening. And I think players owe it to themselves in a way to find their best opportunities. And if you want to get frustrated about anything, in my opinion, get frustrated with Wisconsin, not putting the system and the ecosystem and the right coaches in place to keep this from happening. Like we are reaping what we sow as a program right now with some of these rumors. 
anyway, that's that. Um, coming up, I want to talk now, focus on field with the Iowa game. And let me know in the comments if you disagree. I, I totally respect it if you disagree. If you think um, players shouldn't be looking or co teams shouldn't be tampering. I probably even agree with you, teams shouldn't be tampering. But I'm just telling you that's not the real world. Okay, that, that's happening. And it's going to continue happening probably more and more. So you can complain about it, but it's not going to change. Um, coming up, I want to talk now on the field. Braylon Allen, Graham Mertz, why I'm harder on one of those players than the other. We're going to talk about that next on Locked On Badgers. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends at Upside. Upside is one of the best apps that you can find in helping offset inflated prices, right? Inflation's impacted us all, whether you're eating out, dining. I We eat out less than we used to because inflation has really, it just costs more, quite frankly. And unless you're independently wealthy, inflation has probably impacted you in some way, whether it's less travel, you're, you're going to hotels less often, you're eating out less often, you're buying less things, like inflation just has hit us all. So Upside is one of the best apps that I've found in really helping to combat that. Um, you know, Upside, it basically just download the free Upside app to get started. Use our promo code LOCKED and you get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. And then whenever you're buying, uh, just like you would a normal credit card, use the Upside app and you get free cash back on all the normal things you would do in life, eating out, ga uh, gas, groceries. Upside users have earned millions of dollars every week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Download the free Upside app. Use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. Thank you, everybody, listening to Lockdown Badger State. As always, when you're done here, go check out Lockdown Sports today. All the biggest news stories, everything going on in the sports world in one show, like only Locked On can do it. Wherever you get your podcasts available on this app, YouTube, or the Odyssey app. All right, let's keep going. Let's get into it. Now let's get into on the field. <clears throat> Again, I've seen a ton of comments, most of them aimed at Braylon Allen, Graham Mertz, um, on the field production. Let me tell you, the running back stuff is killing me. So if you've been listening to this show probably for five weeks now, I have talked about how irritating Braylon Allen has been in, in the way he's been running the ball. Okay. He, he's and not just me, Scott, Justin, we talked about this a lot for several weeks. He's running like almost, almost like he's a five, eight. And we see this on the live show. Like he's a scat back. He's bouncing everything out to side. He's not hitting the hole with authority. He's turning three yard runs into one yard runs into no gains. Right. And it's really impacting the offense instead of being second and seven and taking what you can get. Now it's it's second and nine. He's bouncing again, bouncing things out, and he doesn't have the speed to get it. I think if you if you were to use one word, it's tentative. He's running very tentatively, and it's killing this offense. And quite frankly, I think the coaching staff is mismanaging this thing. It, I I just I think he's hurt. Listen, I think Braylon Allen's hurt. I think he's dinged up. I think he's potentially making a bit of a business decision, right? Not dropping his shoulder into everybody. But there were points this year, and I brought this up. I was frustrated by it. People push back on it, but there's points this year where Braylon Allen was healthier. Blowout game against Ohio State late in the game. And Braylon Allen busts off that long run. And everybody's like, yeah, go get him. I'm like, why is he out there? The game's over. Like, Braylon Allen, this is his second year in a row. He's worn down. He hasn't kept the same burst throughout the year. You got to manage this dude's workload. And they didn't do it earlier in the year. Jim Leonard talked about it, saying we, we are cognizant of his workload. We need to understand. Well, you weren't because he shouldn't have been out there at the end of the Ohio State game. He just shouldn't have been like there's moments to get other people some reps. Why can't uh, you tell me the offense is going to fall off a cliff if Julius Davis gets three, three reps or you run a couple fullback dives with, with Acker or gosh forbid, Isaac Rendo gets a few more carries. That's the other one I want to get into. And I know people are probably sick of it because all I do is talk about Grendo, 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 get the man more touches, but listen, get the man more freaking touches, right? Like what are we doing? You know, Braylon is averaging 5.44 yards per carry on 19 touches a game. 5.44. Uh, Grendo's averaging 6.29. He's averaging 6 and 6.3 yards per carry on five carries a game. Five. And it's not some flukish thing. Grendo averaged uh, 6.9 yards per carry last year. Now, it was limited because he got hurt. But that's two years in a row on limited carries. The dude's giving you six-plus yards per carry. Maybe give him a few more. Right. Like Ches, here's the thing that, that drives me nuts. Like Ches Malusi was averaging 3.9 yards per carry on about 10 touches a game. Okay. 3.9 yards per carry on 10 touches. 
Garendo is getting five touches a game. So when you know when Braylon and, and Chez were in there, they were both less productive on a per carry basis than Isaac Garendo. And they're both getting more carries. Like at some point, you have to look at what's happening in the game. Braylon Allen is not fully there. Right. So maybe instead of continuing just to beat your head into the wall with Braylon Allen, maybe you give five more touches to Garendo, who's been an explosive playmaker for you this year and statistically has been better than Braylon. And I, he wouldn't be as good if he got the same amount of touches as Braylon. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting let's see what he can do a little bit more, right? How, what more does Isaac Grendel have to do to get five more touches a game, right? Is it going to kill you if Braylon Allen, who's averaging, you know, and especially in this Iowa game, who's not getting anything done, gets a few less touches, and you try to break something with Isaac Grendel? Is that going to kill you? I just – I don't like how the coaching staff is managing this. It's very weird to me. I think you have an obvious weapon in Garendo that's not being utilized, and you have a guy in Braylon Allen who's being overutilized. It's, it seems very simple to take some from Cup A and pour it into Cup B. Um, so that's frustrating. I, I don't know if that's an Al Johnson thing, if that's a Coach Ingram thing, if that's a collaborative thing. Um, but I do want to get back into – we talked about it with Al Johnson and, and how reasons Braylon Allen might be frustrated. It does feel like the running back group hasn't delivered this year. And an easy person to look to is Al Johnson, right? You brought him in and I want to transition this into something we talked about earlier in the year. We talked about, this is a year um, with the coaching turnover that all these assistant coaches are essentially auditioning for their job too, right? Jim Leonard is for sure, but all of these guys are, all these guys are auditioning for their job, whether it's this one or it's their next one, right? Because if Jim Leonard gets this job, not everyone's going to stay. If he doesn't get this job, almost nobody's probably going to stay. So all these coaches are kind of looking for work next year. There's nothing guaranteed. And you got to think that the job Al Johnson has done, the the way Braylon Allen has looked this year, the running back rotation, you got to think that ugh, he's probably not going to be back next year. Um, and then Bobby Ingram, you know, we transitioned into that. This is a tough one. I, I saw a bunch of comments on Bobby Ingram about, not a good game from him. The offense drastically underperformed against Iowa. Obviously, I was really good, by the way, for sure, defensively. What I don't know what Ingram could have done in this game with the way Braylon Allen was running and the way Graham Mertz was throwing. But that being said, you got to try something different, right? It, it's it very it really felt again like that Paul Christ offense, which was run, run, pass, play action, then run, run, run. Um, where's it? Jet sweep. That that jet sweep has been pretty effective this year. When we've used it, I don't. We I don't think we went to it once in that game. You know, why, why not fake the jet sweep a little bit more and then try to get something going? Why not get Grendo on the edges? You know, why not throw a little bit more on first down to try to take Iowa out of what they're doing? Uh, hit the middle of the field, like Justin was saying, a little bit more. It seemed like the passing was very outside oriented. You know, so it. it I don't want to crush Bobby Ingram for this, but you got to mark it down as a failed addition if you're just looking at this game and. It's not good enough. So I'm starting to get to the point where I don't think it's completely fair to Bobby Ingram. I really don't. But I think he's probably got to be gone too. Like the offense has now dramatically underperformed. Michigan State was um, a terrible performance from the offense. This was a terrible performance by the offense. You know, Graham Mertz is coming off a couple back-to-back iffy performances. So it has, it's been very inconsistent. But it hasn't been good enough. And I think you're at the point now where there, there's established and – Uh, reputable and experienced offensive coordinators with a track record on the open market. I think you got to go get one of those dudes. I'm not saying Ingram can't be a good offensive coordinator. I actually think he can be. I think we've seen improvement for the most part since he took over, but it's been really inconsistent. And if you're Wisconsin, you can't take the risk. Like you have to get somebody established. You, you have to, it's been too inconsistent and quite frankly, too unimaginative uh, in this season with Bobby Ingram for me to feel good about him going forward. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. I want to quickly touch on Graham Mertz too, the on the field stuff. We talked kind of the off the field, whatever. I love – here's the thing about Graham Mertz that I, I hope fans give him enough credit for. He's friggin' tough. He took a lot of shots in that game. You could tell he was hurting, and he's pretty accountable. Like Graham Mertz will come out and say, I didn't play well enough. He faces the media. Um, and quite frankly, he's been solid this year. That's the thing too. Everybody's quick to say, ah, oh, he should have been benched, or I can't wait till he transfers. Graham Mertz is 18 touchdowns this year. That's second in the Big Ten. I mean, eight picks. Last year, he threw 10 touchdowns and 11 picks. Right now, he has 18 touchdowns and eight picks. He has absolutely gotten better. And right now, statistically, and I would say by the eye test, he's a middle-tier Big Ten quarterback, which coming into this year, we all would have taken. 
right? It's a lot of the pieces around Graham Mertz that have fallen apart. Now, this was a terrible game. The Iowa game in a single snapshot was atrocious. He was missing throws everywhere. He was sailing passes. That interception was an absolute backbreaker. That fumbled exchange where he just dropped it resulted in like on our side of the field in the second half that resulted in like 11 yard loss, killed a drive. Um, multiple misfires on short throws. He was terrible, At, period. <laughs> Nothing else can be said about that. He was an awful quarterback in this Iowa game, and he was one of the principal reasons Wisconsin lost. But for the most part this year, he's been better. So I would just say be careful hoping he leaves because we have nobody behind him. And Wisconsin's not the NIL slash um, sexy attraction that's going to lure a top-tier transfer quarterback. I think <laughs> – I think I'm actually pretty good if we can solve this stability around Graham Mertz. I bring in a, a different offensive coordinator. I'm pretty good with him staying. I don't think Graham Mertz is actually the problem. I know a lot of people disagree with me on that. I would love to throw it in the comments. Let me know. We'll chop it up. You, know, you guys know I'm here to chop up any disagreements. Like, I love it. Respectful disagreements make us all smarter. But I, I don't think he's real the pro really the problem. In Iowa, he was terrible. But for the most part, this year, he's been pretty solid. So, that's my thoughts on that. Coming up, we have some really salty user comments we're going to get to, um, including some some ultimatums. You know, I don't want Jim Leonard if he's going to have Ingram back. Um, you know, a couple comments about Wisconsin and the Iowa game. We have a lot of fun stuff to get into. That's coming up next on Lockdown Badges. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. This week's thrilling moment in college football is brought to you by Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers in vehicles as capable as the driver themselves. When I think about unbelievable, thrilling moments on the college football field, I go back to today. I'm going back to September 1st, 2011, opening game, Wisconsin UNLV. Y'all know where I'm going with this. Russell Wilson's first game as a Badger. I was so hyped for that game. All right. I was so hyped watching the entire offseason hoopla with Russell Wilson. He commits to Wisconsin. We have this great offensive line, the great running backs, and he just looks unbelievable against UNLV to kick it off, right? Wisconsin wins 51-17. Russell Wilson's 10-13. He had that 46-yard scamper. And in that moment, all right, that season didn't quite follow, like, the script in my head. I thought it would. But in that moment, it felt like Wisconsin had something special brewing in the tea kettle. And I was so excited for it. I still watch highlights from that game. It was so much fun. That is this week's thrilling moment. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier, Armada, or Pathfinder today. Available now at Nissan.com. I want to thank everybody for continuing to listen to Lockdown Badgers, being here. I really appreciate it. I do want to take a second. I forgot to do this the other day. I'm beating myself up over it. For all the veterans who are watching this show, who have watched the show, thank you. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate you all so, so much for your sacrifice and everything you've given to this, this country. Um, I'm a veteran myself for those that, that don't know, I did nine years in the submarine service. So uh, thank you to everyone who has served and given that time. Um, yeah, happy veterans day. I missed it. I, I apologize. I meant to say that earlier, but I do want to say that. And then let's get into it. Let's get into, uh, some comments, some, some things I want to talk about from y'all, from people who listened. Um, let's start here. One thing I will say is that if JL's vision includes Ingram as our future offensive coordinator, then I will absolutely do not trust or believe in JL's vision. That's from Eat, Drink, Listen, also known as Scott. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. I didn't used to be here, uh, but I agree. If Jim Leonard thinks that Ingram is the guy and the right way to go forward, I would highly, highly question that direction. I just, I don't think he's the guy. I, I think he could be. At some point down the road, but where Wisconsin is right now, you need to know for sure who the offensive coordinator is next year has had success as an offensive coordinator. I don't know if I said that quite how I was trying to say it, but you got to get a sure thing. And Bobby Ingram, just because he hasn't done it, he's not a sure thing. Scott, man, thank you for the comment. Um, we got Brian Shetty. At one point during the game, I said, good riddance to Braylon. He seems so checked out this game and he does not want to be here. I don't want him to be here. See, here's a game where I go back and Brian, thank you for the comment. Like kids have to make business decisions. So I, I, if a kid's looking at a different program and saying that's a better business decision, I kind of, again, I kind of blame Wisconsin for that and not the kid. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. Braylon does look a little checked out. He looks a little not as physical. I think he's banged up, right? So I think he's nursing something, which again gets back to my point of give other people the ball more than and don't ride Braylon. Um, yeah, but 
I wouldn't say I don't want him here. I think Wisconsin's better, obviously, with Braylon Allen, and I don't begrudge a kid for checking out different opportunities or seeing if something else is out there. I think we all do that on the corporate world, by the way. If you were in a company and your boss was fired and your department's underperforming and there's another company out there that says, hey, come here, we're, we're doing better than y'all. I, a lot of us would listen too. Um, all right, let's get here. Comment from Monte D. How can the offense succeed? Question mark. You have an offensive coordinator who hasn't called plays before. Running back coach who hasn't coached running backs. A tight end coach who's a special teams coach and no special teams to coach special teams. Yeah. So I 100% agree. Like I said, and I said this before the show, I thought this was, or before the season, I thought this was kind of obvious. These coaching hires don't make sense to fix an offense. You're putting a bunch of dudes in spots who have never done it before. So that one's on Paul Christ. It was a big risk. It was what I thought a non-necessary risk and it hasn't worked out. I agree. Monte D, thank you for the comment. Just rewatched the missed targeting call when Campbell clocked Garendo. That was textbook targeting uh, from the ref, and he had a clear view. That's from Tim Palm. Yeah, that was a terrible missed call. Uh, for those who who don't remember it, it was, I think, third quarter. Uh, Mertz, or Mertz hit uh, Garendo on the right sideline. Iowa came in, clocked him as third down. Definitely Campbell definitely led with the helmet. That was, that was a big-time targeting call. Should have been 15 yards. Does it make a difference in this game? Probably not. I mean, it probably doesn't. Like, Wisconsin's offense was still doing nothing. They would have still had to drive the length of the field. Now, field position really mattered. Uh, it would have changed the subsequent punt, which led to an Iowa return, which led to an Iowa score. So, yeah, it, it would have impacted the game, but that was it, that was just an incredibly bad missed call. Everybody thought it was pretty obvious. Um, let's go here. I don't know who made this comment. I forgot to put it in, but he had three points. Number one, Mertz is worse than last year. I disagree. I think he's better. Number two, front line is horrific. I disagree again. Um, I think the pass – so this is weird. Trey Wedding had a really bad game at right guard. All right. I don't think he's a guard, though. I, I I mean, it's easy to blame him. He was really bad. He gave up several pressures. He got Mertz hit a couple times. But I think he's a tackle. I don't think that's his natural spot. So, again, some of this goes back to Bob Bostead. You know, this line has underperformed in general. I thought the line was okay, though, in this game. Keep in mind, I was really good. I was defensive line is really good. So this was always going to be a challenge. I still think despite that, we underperformed. But I thought the pass pro outside of Wedding was actually pretty solid. Um, and number three, the offensive coordinator is terrible. Yeah, it was a bad game. It was a bad game from Ingram. I agree. Oh, that was from Stevie Boy. Sorry. Um, let's see. Brad Calkins. Uh, glad to see Justin Rajiv. Told you so. Jim Leonard is not the answer as head coach. Yeah, it's always good to have Justin Rajiv on. Those are great dudes. Uh, Brad, thank you for the comment. I'm not ready to write off Jim Leonard. I, I really am not. I think he walked into kind of a broken situation and he's doing the best he can do with the puzzle pieces he was given. He doesn't have all the puzzle pieces, right? He's missing a corner, a couple middles. He doesn't have the picture of the box. I, I have a hard time blaming him for this, right? He's not an offensive guy. The offense was terrible. The defense is really good. I feel like he's upheld for the most part, his end of the bargain. Uh, but this was a broken ship he took over. You know, it's leaking and all he's trying to do is get it back into port without it sinking. So, I don't think this is a Jim Leonard thing. I don't think it's fair to evaluate the fact that the offense crapped their bed and special teams was awful. Those aren't Jim Leonard's responsibilities coming in this year. And I don't know how he's expected to fix them in the middle of the season. You know, he's not going to hire a new offensive coordinator in week five. So I hear you. I, I appreciate the feedback. I, I kind of disagree with you on the Leonard take, but yeah, I agree with you that it's always good to see Justin Rasheed. Those two are, are superstars. Um, let's see. Wisconsin didn't give this game away, as you guys are implying. Iowa rotates eight men on defense, and they're all very on the D line. They're all very good. Wisconsin made mistakes because Iowa forced them to. That's from JB. Nah, I disagree. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, you can miss me with that pitch because that's not a strike. That's a ball. Miss me with that one. Um, you know, miss, Iowa's really good. Listen, Iowa is really good. Iowa stifled Wisconsin at the line of scrimmage. You know, they're able to play tight coverage on the receivers and, and really make it difficult for Wisconsin to move the ball. But Wisconsin didn't make all these mistakes because Iowa forced them to. They, they had a punt block because John Torchio had a brain fart. That led to seven points. That's not because Iowa's rotating eight men on the D-line. You know, they, they gave up a pick six on a play where Mertz had some time and just missed the throw. That wasn't because Iowa was rotating eight people on the defensive line. That was because Wisconsin was terrible, right? They Wisconsin gave up a... a what 40 yard punt return was that because Iowa was rotating eight men on the D line? All of those are what led to the Iowa points by the other Iowa points, by the way. So 
No, I mean, hard disagree. I was great up front. They're a great defense, but a lot of these mistakes were Wisconsin self-imposed. Yeah, you can, like I said, you can miss me with that pitch. That's not a strike. Um, please don't forget, though, it's not necessarily on the Badgers. The Iowa defense and special teams is outstanding, but you guys are way overhyping your defense. That's from Connor Alt, who I believe is an Iowa fan, which I appreciate. Like, I appreciate the comments. I love talking sports with anybody. Yeah, I don't think we're overhyping our defense. I mean, Iowa had 146 yards. Even, even by Iowa standards, that I mean, we had six sacks. You know, the defense was was really good, and they've been pretty good for most of the year. It's a really good defense. Um, but you are correct. Obviously, Iowa's special teams and defense are really good. No losses all on the Badgers. Uh, Iowa played very well defensively. We've got the big special teams play that that flip momentum, no doubt there. Um, and that's kind of the, the comments in the show. You know, to wrap it up, very frustrating loss, right? Um, if I If I bullet point all this really quick, I don't blame Jim Leonard. I think Graham Mertz is playing better than people think. I wouldn't blame the players for tampering. I put that all on uh, the program and how the program has failed. Um, tampering is going to continue going on, by the way. Braylon Allen could be used a little less. Isaac Grendel a little bit more. And that's on the coaches. And I think a lot of the offensive coaches are failing their addition here. So very frustrating loss. Appreciate everybody tuning in. When you're done here, go check out Locked On Sports today. All the biggest news stories of the day, like Locked On can only, like only Locked On can do. Find it on uh, YouTube, podcast, wherever you get your podcast at. With that, on Wisconsin, we're going to continue talking Badgers football and basketball. We'll come back to you tomorrow, get some more people on the show. Um, tough loss. Yeah, Wisconsin really botched this one. On Wisconsin, let's go.